what's going on guys welcome back to dave's rc so i'm just doing a quick like live stream real quick guys um just for some of you guys on, in, on instagram i'm going to do this uh just kind of like this live overview of what i've done to the pack boss so far um first things first the paint job is coming out really nice you guys it's coming out really nice i'll show you guys that in a minute once we get a few people in here um just custom what's up baby how you doing man good to see you bro um yeah man um i just been kind of picking away at this thing you know a little bit by little bit jeff your fucking paper towel trick has done wonders on this plane you guys jeff's custom rc gave me this really cool idea about using paper towels um now for the for the tan part i use tape but for all the brown parts that you see on the plane i use paper towel you guys straight up so I was hoping that you weren't doing a live stream a live stream right now. I know that you usually do a live stream about this time. I was hoping that you weren't. Um, yeah, man, the paper towel trick. I wouldn't call it a trick. It's 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 just that's that's just a, a genius thing, man. Uh, but it worked great. It uh, it's given me the lines and the contours that I wanted. Uh, the plane's coming out really nice, you guys. No, I'm sleeping tonight. No, I just got home from work, man. I just got back from work and I'm just like tinkering around with this plane. Uh, the uh, the electronics are ordered. I didn't order the fans yet, guys, because I'm not sure if I want to use if I want to do JP fans or if I'm going to use something else. I'm probably just going to use uh, a couple of like Motion RC in runners uh, for this. It doesn't need much. It's a super light plane. I got two uh, ADM ESCs coming. I've got all the um, electronics coming for it. All of the everything for it. I even have a control board coming as well so that I can put lights on this thing. Um, it's, it, it's not going to be your average. It's not going to be your average LX pack file. You guys, I haven't seen an LX pack file that looks like this one. I always go online and I want to find like, like the, like some of the rarest paint schemes that you've seen. And this paint scheme that's on this plane, it's not exactly the way they have it um, on the desert scheme LX pack file, but there is a de desert LX pack file out there. You guys, if you look it up on Google, you'll see that it looks pretty much like this thing right here. Um, except that I put my own, uh, I put my own lines in it, uh, instead of copying that plane verbatim. Um, I just, uh, I did it my own way like usual, like I always do. What's up, guys? How's everybody doing? Oh, my God. I got a few of you guys in here. I didn't realize I was going to have too many people come in tonight. Um, but, yeah, guys, let me give you a look at this thing. You got, you guys have to – you have to look – you have to get a nice look at it to, to understand, like, how, how, how just – how wonderful it's coming out, you guys. I mean, it's actually coming out really nicely, you guys. come out super nice man i can't get over how nice i mean this is all done with paper towel you guys this is done with paper towel that's done with paper towel paper towel paper towel this is this is just a piece of paper towel laid out like this look you can even see the corner of where the paper towel was down there you see how there's like an edge there like a corner piece there that's the corner of the paper towel like right there you guys it just it just came out so nice and then all of these pack boss for some reason have this giant m on the back i'm not sure what that's all about i'm not sure what the big giant m on the back of the pack boss is but i put it on there i mean it looks okay i i after putting it on i wish i wouldn't have put it on i wish i would have just done more brown uh in places um but whatever it, it's there it's 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 you know i have uh decals that actually go over these engine bays right here so I won't be doing anything to this part right here because I got two um, decals that need to go on there. But um, yeah, man, thanks to Jeff's custom, man, his idea, man. I got I got this plane looking pretty sharp, man. Uh, so yeah, thanks Jeff's custom for that idea. I used it on a few planes of mine. Um, I actually used it when I painted my um, when I, when I painted my Top Gun L thirty nine. I used that trick as well. So yeah, man. Yeah, Nate, I'm loving it, man. I'm absolutely loving the paint scheme. Um, it, it's coming out better. It's coming out better than, than I imagined, you guys. Um, and it's only going to look better the more I go with it and the more I progress. And once we put the decals on it and stuff, it's going to look pretty sharp. Thanks, Juan. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm digging it, man. I'm absolutely digging it. So how's everybody doing tonight? How's everybody doing tonight on this lovely Tuesday?
Jeff Reese says he's doing good, man. That's good, Jeff. That's good, man. Glad to hear that. Just relaxing. Just relaxing. Bledsoe's Train's trying to get a hold of uh, Jeff's Custom RC. So uh, make sure you hit up Bledsoe, Jeff's Custom. Chilling with the weasel, Brian Chambers says. Nice. Yeah, I didn't want to take up too much of you guys' time, but um, instead of doing another Instagram post, I was like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get on online and uh, see how everybody's doing. Um, so, I, I, I one thing that I wanted to come online tonight and talk about real quick, you guys, is um, those E Flight retracks that I bought from from our hobby store. I'm not gonna say their name. I'm never gonna shout them out in another video for as long as I live. Um, and depending on how everything works out in the end here is going to depend on whether or not I go back to that store ever again. Um, so you guys all saw the flight, the retract wouldn't come down out of the Falker Wolf. So if you watch the Falker Wolf flight that I just did, the retract wouldn't come down. Uh, obviously there was something wrong with the retract, uh, retracts just don't not come down for no reason. There was, there was obviously a reason. The, the reason that the retract failed to begin with was because the screw mechanism that opens and shuts the retract was not crimped into the motor. Uh, it's a different design on those, uh, on those E-flight retracts. And that, that screw mechanism has to be crimped and pinched into the motor inside of the casing. And it wasn't. And what happened was when I landed, uh, the right retract was just flopping there. It wasn't locked down because the screw mechanism had come out of the motor, which is making it so that 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 retract just sits there and flops. As the plane landed, the retract on the right hand side buckles, the plane spins to the right, and then the other retract rips out. Well, obviously, because of the force of the weight of the plane, um, it was very apparent that it was a manufacturer's defect, especially after you look at the retract and you see exactly what the hell went wrong with it. And that's exactly what happened to the retract. Um, they ordered the new ones for me. They said that they would be in in a week. Well, I've been calling for a week. And then finally, they told me today that they weren't going to honor a return. I talked to the owner of the store. He gave me his song and dance about how he cares for his customers, but in the same breath was telling me how he doesn't want to be out any money. Well, it's either you care about your money and you care about yourself or you care about the customer. You can't you can't care about the money in your pocket and then also care for the customer because I had been walking out of that store with those retracts today had they not given me any fuss about it. Now, he said he was going to call E-Flight or he was going to call Horizon and take care of it and he, you know, have somebody call me. I called Horizon myself, you know, because that's what a responsible person does. They don't trust people. Come on, buddy. Back up. Or go lay down. Go on. So. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go lay down. Um, so I called Horizon myself and I said, so I bought these retracts from a hobby center. Um, they have a contract with you, obviously, because all the stuff in there is E-Flight. Um, what are my options? He said, well, your options are you can have him take care of it or you can just go get the retracts yourself. Show us a, a copy of your receipt and um, take a picture of what's wrong and we'll send you a new pair of retracts. Thank you, RC Stinger. Yes, the customer is always right. And basically the whole time today on the phone, he was telling me about how I was wrong and how I have to wait. I have to wait on him. Listen, man, I, I, I spend a lot of fucking money in that store, okay? And, and if I had to go back and ask him to dig up my whole pro, my, my everything that I bought from that store, all the giveaways that I bought from that store, everything that I purchased from that store, uh, I bought a... Um, uh, I bought a flex jet from them. I got it home and the Aurora doesn't work. Instead of going through all the bullshit and putting them through any pain or suffering or any losses, I just took the Aurora out and did the plane up my own way. I bit the bullet on that one. I'm not going to bite the bullet on a pair of retracts now too. It always seems like whatever, if I buy something for a giveaway and give it to you guys from there, it's fine. But every time I buy something for myself from that store and I bring it home and put it together for myself, there's always something wrong with it, except for the havoc. 
Uh, I didn't find a ha I didn't have a problem with the havoc. The havoc was fine. Um, but the flex jet I had issues with, and there was another plane I had issues with too that I bought from there, and I can't think of it now. Can't think of which one it was. It'll come to me later, I'm sure. Um, but not not at one one time did he apologize and say, Dave, you know, I'm sorry for this situation. Not once. No, it's not his fault, of course. It's not his fault. All I wanted him to do was honor it. Look, you can see that it's a manufacturer defect. You have a contract with these people. If you tell them you sold something to me and it didn't work or it failed, which one? Uh, Aiden Minor, you didn't watch the you didn't yeah you didn't watch the video then you watch the video retracts work fine no you didn't watch the right video then because those retracts I hit that button three times that retract didn't come down you're watching the wrong video Adrian. Yeah, I should have landed in a harder spot, but still, those re the, look. The point is, is I took the retrack apart, Adrian, and the pin came out of the retrack. That that shouldn't have happened. I mean, bottom line is, is if something breaks, the retrack would not come down. If you watch the video again, I had to flip that switch three times in order to get that retrack to come down. And then when it came down, it didn't lock into position because the pin fell out. So. That retract actually caused damage to my plane. You obviously didn't watch the video good enough, or you would have seen that. Yes, and if and if you watch watch even further, when we actually get over to the plane, you can see that the retract's wobbling. The other retract was fine. The the thing worked just fine. If if you actually take the time to actually dissect the video, Adrian, you'll see what happened. The plane lands. Yeah, it digs in a little bit, but nothing happened to the other retract. The other retract was just fine. That retract on the right-hand side was loose. It was just hanging there because the pin fell out of the motor. So it's just hanging there. So, of course, when the plane lands, that, that, that retract's going to buckle. And the plane does exactly what a plane would do if a right retract failed and buckled under the plane. It spun to the right. It ripped the other one out because of the drag force. Do a little investigation before you leave a comment in my freaking comments, man. Watch the video. Watch the video over again and over again until you finally see it. Anyways, he didn't honor it. He said he was going to call somebody and, and then have them deal with it. But I'm just going to go in there tomorrow. I'm going to grab the retracts. Horizon already told me that I can send the fucking things back myself. I can deal with them myself. And they'll send me a new pair of retracts. All I got to do is take a picture of the damn things. They're not even going to ask me for the old ones back. They just want to see a picture of the defective mechanism and that they'll send me a new pair straight up. So why is it that easy for me to do it? But it's hard for a person who has a contract with this company. Why is it so hard for him to do it? I know you guys got my back. I mean, obviously, Adrian didn't watch the video. He's just like flipping through the video and fast forwarding and not actually watching the entire flight where he's seeing me flip the switch over and over again and complain that the retracts not coming down and that I have to belly land this thing, brand new plane. No, I'm just, and don't kick him out or mute him or anything like that. That's his opinion. He can have his fucking opinion. I don't care. I know what fucking happened to that plane. I, I saw what happened with my own eyes. The retract failed. It didn't, it, it didn't lock in the downward position and exactly what would happen if that, in that scenario, if you had a right retract, not locked down is exactly what the plane did. It dug in that retract collapsed. It caused the plane to spin. And, and like the sheer force of the momentum of the plane going forward and it being sideways, obviously is going to rip out the other one. It's only glued in there with the factory, with the factory glue from the factory. So it's not like I had that thing epoxied in there with my own epoxy. That was a factory glue job that just was not going to last. It, it wasn't, it wasn't going to be able to deal with that kind of a pressure. Um, I told the guys like, look, your failed retract caused damage to my plane. I got to replace the motor mount on that plane as well. Cause it cracked the motor mount. Um, so I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bitching and saying that you guys have to take care of that. I just want the retracts replaced. Uh, so I mean, I think this goes back to me and me and Ray kind of just not having a, a good, a good past. There was a time when he wouldn't let me into the fucking flying field and it was all about money. It's like, bro, if you want money that bad, come down here, have somebody come down here and grab my fucking dues off me then. 
but you're not going to let me in here. I just drove an hour down here to do a flight video and you're not going to let me in because of 40 bucks or 60 bucks or whatever it is. I said, I'll leave the money somewhere, you know, at the, at the flying field. That way the next person that shows up can grab the dues. Uh, they just weren't willing to budge. I kind of threw a fit about it and, and he kind of gave me some fucking attitude uh, telling me how, you know, you got to be, your dues have to be paid or they can't let you in. When I was, I was a member the year before. I think they just should have honored me going in there and being okay with it. You know, I've been in there by myself, uh, you know, a dozen times. Uh, I just, I, I think that they were just giving me the run around that day and just kind of just blowing smoke up my ass with all the bullshit that they were telling me. And then they were telling me how it wasn't politics. Of course it's politics. You guys, you're the president of the field. You're the vice president of the field. And one of you guys is okay with me going in, but the president says, no, no, he can't go in because of $60. Man, fuck that $60. You guys could have grabbed that from me. Any I wipe my ass with $60. You guys could have grabbed that money from me fucking anytime. I mean, come on. Just I, I just have bad blood with the guy in the first place. And I still, still, even though I know the fucking guy doesn't like me, I still go to his goddamn store and I spend my fucking money at his store to support my local hobby store. I do that for him. Because I know that that's, that's the right thing to do. There's, there's These hobby stores are fucking falling out left and right because of all the online shopping. And I still take it upon myself to drive my ass to his fucking store and buy shit for my giveaways, buy shit for myself. I just bought a $600 SU fucking 30 from him. I could have ordered that son of a bitch online and been just fine. But I went and I supported my local hobby store. Not to mention it was convenient and I could just go and pick it up. That was that was the other. That's the other reason. If you want me to be honest about it, is I, I, the fact the sheer the sheer you know easiness of me going there and picking it up and paying for it um, was a lot easier than me uh, ordering it. But still, I'm still supporting the store. There's so many things that I could have ordered online and just had sent to you guys uh, through giveaways. But I, I take my time. And I go down to that store and I spend my hard earned money in that store. And for this to this situation to be going the way it is right now, it's not cool, man. That's not cool. He should have given me those retracts. He, he knows better. If the he, he tells me that first and foremost, that the customer always comes first. Well, that's bullshit, man. Because right in the same fucking breath of air, he tells me, uh, but I'm not going to lose $180 out of my pocket, Dave. Well, what the fuck do you think I'm doing? If the customer comes first, bro, the customer comes first. You don't tell me the customer comes first and then talk about the money in your fucking pocket. That's not the customer coming first, bro. That's you thinking about the money in your fucking pocket. That's a you thing. Yeah. Yeah, Ryan, it's that way. It's That's the way it is, bro. That's the way it is. That That's that's the way I was just dealt with today. A fucking, a, 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 a loyal fucking customer, a loyal customer for years I've been going into that place and spending my fucking money just to be treated like that. I was like, you know what? I, 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 he said he was going to have somebody call me. Fuck that. I'm going to go to the store and pick those retracks up tomorrow, the ones that I actually left there, the broken ones. I'm going to bring them back here, and I'm going to fucking go through Horizon and take care of it myself. All I got to do is send them an email, he said, and um, and they'll have somebody get back to me. Bledsoe, take it easy, bro. Sorry you had to hear me vent. But I was just, I've, been, I've been really pissed off about it all day, guys. I really have. Yeah, but but Andy, I mean, yeah, the, the the fact is, is that when I actually started dissecting this retrack, um, the other one, the one that actually was actually working, you could look inside of the motor where the screw goes into the motor and you could see that it was crimped in. You could see where the, the, the machine had pinched the, the metal around the screw to make it stay in there. And now, if you go to the retract that was faulty, you could see that it was never crimped at the factory, that the bolt was just going in and out. It was just, in, you know, just, it just, it's a factory default, factory mess up. And yeah, damn hobby shops is right, man. I'm fucking, I'm, I'm, I'm just so fed up with hobby shops, man. I, I, I mean, we only have one in this state, so it's not like we have a lot to fucking choose from here. I... I want to get along with Ray. I really do. I really want to get along with Ray. And when they started giving me this bullshit, oh, there's a video out of you. Land yeah, yeah, there's a fucking video out of me landing that plane in the retract failing. Of course the retract failed. You, you guys know why the retract failed. I mean, Bert has even looked at the retract, I'm sure, and saw what I was talking about. 
and you're going to give me some bullshit about how, oh, you saw this video online. That video showed you the retract failing. That's what that video showed you. That video showed you that first off the retract wouldn't come down after three clicks on my, on my, on my, uh, on my, um, radio click, click, click. Nope. Click, click. Nope. Click. Oh, finally it falls down. If you literally watch the video and zoom in, you'll see the retract not come down. It falls down. And the reason it fell down like that is because it was, it, the screw had fell out of the motor and it was just dangling there pretty much. I've had a lot fucking harder landings than that, bro. A lot harder landings than that with fucking dynam retracts and they fucking were just fine. I don't understand how a hundred, a hundred and eighty dollar pick. Well, I mean, I can understand. Somebody's calling me. Hold on. What's up, Eric? So, um, if you're going to have to spend 180 and get it back from Verizon, don't even go back to the shop. Just order them and get them in two days from Verizon. Yeah, well, here, yeah, I know I could do that, but I, I would like to, I'm going to actually try to go through the channels and, and get them replaced. I don't have another, I don't have an extra $180 to just throw out there right now, dude. I, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, understand that. I mean, so. I could, I could, but I, why, why, why? I mean, the, exactly. the fact, the fact of the matter is, is my new retracts are actually sitting at the hobby store right now. And he's, he's just making sure that he's going to get his ass covered before he gives me the retracts. You have a contract with horizon. Of course, they're going to cover you. you they're going to cover yeah, those retracts. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what his deal is, dude. I honestly, I, I, I honestly think it's just a personal thing. Like I, I just, he's, he's kind of a really cocky, arrogant kind of, kind of guy. And I just, I don't deal with people like that very well, dude. I don't, I, I, you know, everything, 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 everything in me tells me to stay away from that hobby store because of the people that work there. But yet I still go, man, I still go and I still spend my fucking money at that store. Even though I know those sons of bitches have ill thoughts about me, even though I've done nothing personal to them, I've done nothing wrong to them at all. They're just, just mean that the last time you go to them once you get this. Oh yeah, man. I'm I, I already I already told my wife, I said, I'm gonna go grab those retracts tomorrow and I'll they'll never see another fucking dime from me again. I if I had to go back and, and, and take a guess right now, dude, I probably spent about I don't know, at least twenty well, let's see. And in in the in the last two in the last yeah, in the last two years I've probably spent about twenty five hundred dollars at that store. That may not be a lot of money to them. I mean, that may not be a lot of money to them, but that's a fucking lot of money to me. Twenty five hundred dollars. I just spent uh, six hundred. Shop that's barely hanging on. That's exactly that's what it is. I, I that is that's that that's that's exactly what it is too, Eric. They are they are struggling. They're a struggling business, and and most hobby stores right now are struggling businesses because the online purchases are putting people completely out of business. So the guys. So wouldn't you think that the guys that still come in there and purchase stuff, you would want to make sure that you took care of them, right? It's all about the money for him. Yeah, it's exactly so what it sounds like. Them, it has nothing to do with taking care of customers, the money. It's all about the money. Yeah, so the, so the, 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 the fact that he, it, right when he started blowing smoke up my ass is when I was like, you know what, fuck you, man. I mean, you're, you're going to sit here and tell me it's all about the customer and then talk about the money in your pocket. I mean, bro, you just contradicted yourself all in one fucking breath. Come on, man. I would just, I would just go in there and try to play it cool first. Just explain to them, hey, I spoke to Horizon. They admit it's a defect. Mm -hmm. This is what we need to do. And then if you start being a jerk, then you pour out the, I'm going to be a jerk. Yeah. Yeah, I know, man. Oh my God. But you know, you know how angry I get, man. I get so angry that I, I just want to start choking fucking people out. So I, I don't, I'm the same way with that. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, that's, that's why I would just rather just go grab the fucking retracts and walk out and then never see those fuckers again, because I do get angry to the point where I'll fucking reach out and touch somebody, dude. I will. I'll fucking uh, claw. I, I, know. I, 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 I get, I get, I get. That tried to hit me twice yesterday while driving my wife's Yukon. 
doesn't see and you know you know so you know man you know it's it's not and it's not really something that you can control or i can control or anybody else with ptsd can control it's just a snap and and i don't, I don't want to snap on these guys because there are people at that flying field up at the ama club there are people up there that i do give a shit about you know eddie's awesome eric i love i love those guys man um um yeah, yeah there's just there's just so many guys up at the ama field that i actually do give a shit about I don't want one asshole or a couple of assholes to fucking ruin it for me. Yeah, I just, when you go back in, just explain to them, Verizon saying, yeah, this is a defect. This is what you got to do. I'm not going to take care of it. And then if you're still being a jerk about it, then let the jerk out. <laughs> Lee David says that, Lee Davidson says, Dave, I will never shop at a hobby shop ever, ever. He puts it, don't go back. Andy says, don't go back. RC Air Marshall and, and Ryan's been in and out of here going, whoa, whoa, what's going on? I think he said something about my PMS or he said something about PTSD or something. Yeah, I, I, I said that in the notes. Oh, did you? Yeah. I'm like, I wanted to call you because I was driving and can't really message. Kenny, Kenny's laughing so hard he's shitting himself, I guess, right now. Can you guys can you guys can you guys kick this bird bird out? He's from the hobby store. I don't want him in here. Bert, you should have known this was coming. Customer fucking customer customer first my ass. Well, let me go because I know you're doing the back. All right, buddy. All right, man. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, this, this uh, Bert's in here right now, and he's 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 one of the. Talk tomorrow too, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I'll talk. I'll talk to you. Yeah, you you need to talk to somebody, don't you, man? You need somebody to talk to. Well, you do too. So just yeah. I'll, yeah call me tomorrow. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you later, man. Have a good night. You too. Buddy. Bye. I mean, I don't understand why, 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 why you're reallying me, Bert. Why, why would you really me? The really should be on you guys, Bert. Really should be. Oh my God, Dave. Dave's retracts failed. We should give him the new set of retracts and honor it like an honorable store would. Don't really, don't really me, Bert. Don't, 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 don't come in my fucking stream and really me. Don't just fucking leave. Fucking spend so much money at that goddamn store for you guys to fucking treat me like that. I'm kind of glad you did come in. You guys look like a bunch of asses right now. And that's what I do. I'm going to fucking expose you if you treat customers like shit. So stay the fuck out of my stream. Really, Dave. Don't fucking really Dave me, man. I'm the one that's being shit on here, not you guys. Just bought fucking $1,000 worth of shit out of your store. And I need something replaced because there's a manufacturer defect and you guys are giving me the fucking runaround. Bullshit. I just talked to Horizon today. He said it should be no fucking problem. Should be no problem at all. I shouldn't have been, I shouldn't have had this runaround, period. Not to mention it fucking ruined my goddamn plane. I got a broken goddamn motor mount on a $500 fucking $450 plane I just bought. I'm not asking them to replace that. I'm just asking them to replace what, what they should replace. And I know I'm being treated like this because you guys have something out against me. I know it. You guys don't fucking like me and I know it. And I don't give a fuck. I could care less if you guys like me. You guys don't like me. I know that. And I still come spend money at your fucking store. Kiss my ass. Come in my fucking stream. Get the fuck out of my stream. You weren't invited. It's bullshit, man. It, it is. I've been, I have been steaming about this all day. They've already made me wait a week, and I know that's partially because of the weather, but when the fucking things finally come in, 
They're going to tell him, give me some song and dance about, oh, there's a video up on YouTube. Yeah, there's a video on YouTube showing your product failing on me and ruining my plane. And, and it wasn't that bad of, of damage on the plane. But the fact is, is that there's damage on a brand new plane of mine because of a failed retract. And that's and that's not even the, that's not even the focal point or center point of my bitching here. My bitching point is that I called Horizon. Horizon said that this should have been no problem. They should have just exchanged it because he's going to get his money, whether he wh no matter what. It's a defective fucking part there. He was going to get his money no matter what. And the other thing that aggravates me is how he says it's the customer first. But in the same breath, he tells me, oh, but I don't want to be out one hundred eighty dollars. Well, is it the customer first? I mean, come on, man. Think think about what I've just what I've just said to you guys. If I buy something from Walmart and it's defective, I take it back. They exchange it without asking any fucking questions. Period. They don't ask any questions. I just think I just think it's messed up. I just I really think it, I really do. I think it's messed up. Uh, and that's not even really what I wanted to come on here and do. I didn't even want this fucking stream to be anything about that. I just wanted to bring up the point that I felt like I was being dinked around by the hobby store. Um, oh, yeah, man. I, I just I, I think it's super aggravating. It's aggravating. It really is. Nobody has one hundred and eighty dollars to just throw around and, 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 and give me a couple of days, he said. Well, Horizon just said they would take care of it for me like ASAP. So why is it a couple of days for you guys? But Horizon's willing to take care of me right now as long as I can send them a picture of the receipt and, and, and a picture of the defect. I don't get it. I don't understand. I mean, I do understand. I do understand. And several of you guys have mentioned it in here in, in the stream. Let it go. Yes. Yes, I will let it go. I'll, I'll let it go as soon as I'm taken care of, man. As soon as I go and get my retracts back from that fucking store and I, and I walk away from it for good, that, that's, 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 that's when I'll be good, Adrian. That's when I'll be good. I'll be good once I get my shit and I get the hell out of there and I'm, I'm gone. That's it. With the return label, Guniak is what, what were you saying there? What does that mean? Oh, Joseph, what's up, man? So Joseph is a longtime subscriber. You got a subscriber, you guys. Go ahead and tell Joseph what's up. I'm gonna add you as a moderator. Um nothing, man. I mean, it, it's just it, I, I don't want to keep talking about it. Obviously, there's people in here from the store right now, and I, that's not even that's not I I first off. That's not even what I wanted. I didn't want them to even see this. So if they came into this stream and they saw what they saw, they did it on their own accord. I, di I didn't invite them or tell them that I was doing this live stream. As a matter of fact, I kept this live stream a complete secret all freaking night right up until the point when I posted it, which is about a half hour, 45 minutes ago. I enjoy this hobby, man, and it's things like this that make me not enjoy the hobby. It's dealing with shit like that that makes me just want to fucking shut the cameras off, shut down the YouTube channel, and, and just be done with this shit completely. It, that's that's what that's what that dealing with that kind of shit makes me feel like, you guys. That's what it makes me feel like. It makes me feel like I just want to give up on all this shit and, and just just be done with it. And not that not that Horizon was any better, you guys. I sat on the phone for an hour waiting for them to answer me. So I pushed the one and had them call me back. Um, they called back relatively quick after that. So maybe like 10 minutes and they called back. But every time I've had a defective part with Motion RC and I call, that phone doesn't ring more than three times before someone answers. And guess what? It's a live person. It's a live person. Hey, what can we do for you? Hey, man, I had this defective part. Oh, great. Well, let's get a picture or a video of it. Send it to us, and we'll get you a new one sent out immediately, Mr. Garrett. Thank you, guys. That's fucking customer service. That's customer service, you guys. What Motion RC does is the epitome of customer service. 
that's how customers should be dealt with. That's that's how. What's 270? Okay, hey, did y'all see the price on the FMS 1400 millimeter pits? Two se- Whoa. Whoa, I was way off. What? Did, I was way off, man. What did I say? Three. What did I say? 380? It's only 279. Dave, yeah, you're right, man. You're right. Motion RC is great. Motion RC makes a lot of these companies look like shit just because of their customer service alone. Not to mention the products that they put out are are great. I can't say enough about the flight line planes that I have. Yeah, see, some of us were even over four hundred dollars. What's up, Joe? Uh, what's up, Joseph? How you doing, man? What's the latest project? Okay, Joseph. So the latest project I have on the table is this pack file that I'm painting. Uh, the electronics, uh, well, at least the servos and the ESCs are on the way, but the um, I haven't decided what I want to put for motors in it yet. But this is the pack file that I started on. I just actually I just painted this. It came gray. It came this base gray color. And, um, and I put this paint scheme on it myself. Um, so this is the project right now. This is the PACFA, the LX PACFA, and it's got a bad rap guys. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. This plane has a bad rap, but if you watch RC informers video, if you go and watch RC informers video, um, you'll see in the video, all of the little things that you have to do to this plane to make it right. And I've done most of those things so far. Uh, I, I do want to reinforce the tail of this plane a little bit. Uh, not quite as, as exaggerated, like as, as elaborate as RC Informer did. Um, what he did to the, to the back of his plane was amazing. Uh, and very, very thought out. Uh, that took some, that took some thought process to actually do what he did and to, to get it the way he did. Uh, overkill, eh, maybe a little, but, what what's it worth to you? You put that little bit of time and effort into your plane in order to make sure that it's not going to fail on you, um, or you're not going to have elevators ripping off in mid-flight. So um, I respect the time and the effort that he put into his. Um, I just found that it would be a little bit more simple for me to do a, a couple of things different than what he did uh, without having to put the piano wire through and 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 kind of block the intakes at all. I know it didn't bother his all that much, but I just wanted to make sure because the power system that, that, that goes in this plane is not what's going in it. And I, I didn't want that to be an obstruction because the, the power that's going to be coming out of this is a lot more than what it had, would have been if, if I would have got the plug and play version of this model. Uh, I'm putting uh, a lot faster EDFs in it, uh, a lot more powerful EDFs and runners in it. And I've got 80 amp speed controllers coming, you guys. So, that's that's a lot. That's a lot of juice that this thing's going to be pu- pushing out. And I didn't want anything obstructing inside of the um, the thrust tubes whatsoever. Uh, I just wanted to uh, make sure that the the tail end of it, where the elevators hang on, was just <laughs> stiffened up a bit. And I've got some carbon fiber that I'm going to throw in there to make sure that that does that. Uh, I think that I can get away with doing it a little differently. Not that I'm not that I'm. Uh, not taking the precautions and making sure that it's done correctly. Uh, I just, I'm going to do it in a different way where I can hide the carbon fiber and not have to put any type of paint over anything or, or carve anything out. Uh, I'm just going to make a couple of slits in places and then hide the carbon fiber in the foam, um, which I've done with a hundred other models uh, out there. Um, just basic, you know, stiffening up of the airframe. Um, pretty simple stuff. If you've done it before, uh, it can be, it can be a little bit like overwhelming if you haven't done it before, but trust me guys, it's just foam. And, and I mean, literally this foam, you can break it in half and then glue it right back together. You, and and you would never know that it was ever broken. I mean, that's just, that's the good deal about foam is you can break it a hundred times and you can glue it back a hundred times. And then you would look at it from a distance and you wouldn't even realize that it had ever been broken at all. Uh, that's the cool thing about foam. That's why I like foam. When you break balsa, you got splinters, you got shit flying everywhere. You got, you know, when foam breaks, it's, it's a clean snap or it's, or it's a crinkle. 
And there's so many different ways that you can get those crinkles out and fix those snaps. Uh, foam is the way to go, man. I honestly believe foam's the way to go. I like foam. I like electric. I don't know why I have a big giant balsa gas plane sitting over there. That's why I'm trying to sell it. Um, I'm a foam guy. I'm a foam. I'm a foam. I'm a foamy guy for life, man. I like the electric foamies. Um, that it, that that's what does it for me. Um, but yeah, uh, to answer your question, that's what we have on the table right now, Joseph. Um, it should be done probably around the first of the month. And I'm hoping that this snow beats feet so that we can get out and start flying some of these jets. I, uh, I, I still have that SU 30. I have to go out and fly. You guys, I was so mad today. I almost took that SU 30, put it in a trash can, put lighter fluid on it and burned it because of where I got it. That's how mad I was today. That's how pissed off I was. That's how, that's how just absolutely bent pissed I was. Um, yeah, I almost put that goddamn thing in a trash barrel, put lighter fluid on it, and put it up in flames. And and I was going to record it, too. But then my wife would have fucking had my balls. She would have, that wouldn't have, yeah, I wouldn't have, yeah, I wouldn't have heard the end of that, so. <laughs> Lisa's just send it to me. <laughs> Jeff, thank you, man. There. So when I was looking at for this paint scheme for a PACFA online, I looked it up through Google. Um, let me grab my phone here real quick, and I'll show you where I found it. Um, and there's only like one of these out there, you guys. There's literally only one PACFA out there that's actually desert scheme like this. Um, I'll show you real quick. Okay, so hold on, guys. I'll, I'll find it here. Shit, where is it? Um, oh, we'll do it this way. Hold on, we'll do it this way. Um, I mean, most of you guys could just look it up, but um. That's it right there, you guys. I can't get it to, to freaking focus. But that's it. I mean, I'm using a little darker darks than they used, and I'm using a little lighter lights than they used. Um, but it's all the same, same deal. Yeah, Eric says I can go Frank the Tank. He says I can go Frank the Tank on the SU-30. <laughs> Good old Frank the Tank, boy. Good old Frank the Tank. You know, I think what the issue is with, with the guys at the hobby store, guys, is is they, they, um, they haven't actually taken the time to actually get to fucking know me. And if they had actually taken the time to actually get to know me before they started judging me, they would have found out that I'm a pretty fucking cool dude, and I do a lot for this community. I do a lot for the RC community. I'm selfless. I have integrity. I live by the Army Corps values that I that were instilled in me when I was when I was in the military. I live by those values. And 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 I think if they actually took a little bit of time to actually have gotten to know me, rather than. Uh, form an opinion of me without knowing me. I think things would have turned out a little better between me and the guys at the hobby store. And they would have actually seen me for who I was and who I am and what I do for my community and what I do for my subscribers. And 
and I do it because I love doing it. I don't give planes away because I feel like I have to. I give those planes away, guys, because I know there's people out there like Ethan. I'm sending him that Raptor of mine, that little 64 millimeter Raptor. I'm just going to give it to him. When, when somebody, when a kid tells me, hey, man, I don't have a lot of money and, uh, you know, can't really afford stuff like that right now, that strikes something inside of me that says, Dave, look at all these fucking planes you have. It's ridiculous. Give that kid that plane. That's what my conscience told me to do, and that's what I did. I follow my conscience religiously. It said, Dave, give that kid that plane. You don't fucking need it. It's sitting on the wall in there. It's going to be hanging on that wall for the next five years. Give it to that kid who's going to go out there and fly it every day. And that's what I do. That's what I did. That's what I'm doing. Once I got that big Focke Wolf, I was like, well, I don't have a need for that little Dynam Focke Wolf anymore. And Eric was more than willing to take it. And I have stuff to send to him anyway. So, I mean, and I, I know, I know Eric, he's, uh, he's still, he's still, you know, battling it out with the military to get his, to get, to get his pension and shit. And I know he's got three girls. I know he doesn't have a lot of money to just go throwing on RC stuff and go fly, throwing on new planes. I said, bro, I don't need this plane anymore. You can take it. I need the room in there anyways. You can have it, even though I haven't sent it out yet. <laughs> I will, Eric. I promise you it's going to get sent out. Um, I'm actually still looking for fucking boxes, you guys, to be honest with you. I'm still actually looking for the perfect boxes to put it in. Because every time I oversize a box, they charge me out the ass to send it. Um, and if the box isn't the right shape, dude, the, the postal service will really, they can, they can really, they can really plow you. I'm telling you that right now. They'll, they'll plow you. <laughs> they will. Um, they don't give a shit, dude. It's about money to them as well. Uh, so if you don't get the boxes just right, you're screwed. You're screwed. You, you just, you just have to make sure that you get the right size boxes and, and, and you'll, you, you'll, you'll pay the right amount and you won't pay too much. Uh, but I tell you what, man, you go in there with a perfectly square box or I can't remember if it's a perfectly square box or if it's a rectangle box. Actually, I think they charge you more for a perfectly squared box. And if it's a rectangle box, they charge you less. Can you guys explain to me just one second? Can you guys explain to me <laughs> this real quick? A perfectly square box is symmetrical, right? And, and, and will probably stack up and make things even if you had a bunch of square boxes, right? If you throw a rectangle box in there, or not a rectangle box, but uh, yeah, a rectangle box in there, that's going to kind of mess up things. You're going to have to get a bunch more squares to stack out on that rectangle in order for everything to be right. So how is it that you pay more for a square box than a rectangle box? Explain that to me. Actually, let's have Kenny explain that to me. <laughs> it's the girth. Ryan says it's the girth. <laughs> it's the girth. <laughs> Oh man. But yeah, guys. Um, wow. I got 31 of you guys in here, man. That's cool, man. Ryan, thanks for stopping by, man. I appreciate it, bro. It's always cool to have you in here with us. Um, Reckham Royce. What's up, Roy? What's going on, Roy? RC Stinger. What's up, man? <laughs> the Air Marshal, Danny Miller. Danny Miller, LOL, he says. Let's get Danny Miller a wrench. Danny, if you show up on the first, I'll enter you into our giveaway. It, Brian says, for real, it's math. I, I And that's what he tried explaining to me, Ryan, but I just... I just... I, I couldn't figure it out, man. I know I know they have, like, an, an algorithm. Is that an algorithm? Yeah, an algorithm. They have an algorithm, too. And they say, no square boxes. <laughs> All right, Danny. That's cool, man. Yeah, like I said, show up on the first of the month, and we'll get you a number, and we'll put you in the hat for the drawing. I think we're giving away a Husky. We are giving away an Arrows Husky. If you want to look that up, go ahead. Go to pilotryanmedia.com, then go to Arrows, and then go and search the Husky, and you'll see what we're giving away. Roy. No, Roy, you're the man, dude. Roy, you are the man. You are the man. You fly that P-47 better than I ever I ever dreamed of, dude. 
my phone data. <laughs> Air Hammer, I'll, I'm going to give you a wrench as well. You show up on the first, and we'll get you a number, get you put in the hat for the drawing. If you don't have a blue wrench, you also I need you guys to subscribe too. That's part of the deal. This is a subscriber only, subscriber only um, giveaway. If I was started giving away these, doing these giveaways and giving it to people who weren't subscribers, um, what's left on the T50, Dave? Okay, so the electronics are on their way. Uh, I bought the servos. I bought this as a complete kit plane, so it needed sir. It needed all the electrical stuff, everything. The only thing that I have is the airframe here. Um, we're not going to activate the thrust vectoring in it. As a matter of fact, um, these are going to get pulled off. I'm taking these round things, pivot things out of here, and I'm gluing this straight to the plane. And it's just going to be a regular, just regular non-thrust vectoring plane. Uh, so we need the electronics, the servos. The servos and the ESCs are on the way. However, I'm holding off on the motors because I haven't decided which motor I want to go with. I was thinking about the 2100 kV in runner that Motion has, but then I also saw some other in runners out there that might be a little cheaper, but maybe not. We'll see. Uh, so I'm just kind of holding off on the motors right now. And I also was thinking about putting JP fans in this, and those are a little bit more pricey. So I'm I'm just I'm just kind of chilling on the motors for right now and the fan units for right now and just focusing on what I need for electronics. So uh, basically everything's done. Um, the paint, there's a little bit more on the paint I have to do. Um, we have to put the gear doors on, just small stuff, little stuff, control arms, linkages, but we can't put the control arms and stuff on until we get the, uh, the uh, servos. Um, so yeah, there's still a bit to do. We still have a bit to do. I still have the rudders to put on and it looks like these rudders are like I almost want to say that they look like they're glue on rudders and that's kind of crazy. Uh, that's kind of crazy to have glue on rudders. Um, I hope they're not glue on rudders. I haven't actually taken a look at them yet to see if they glue on, but we will shortly. He said, been a sub since the P 47 giveaway. Oh, Oh, the uh, arrows P 47, man. It took me like six months to get that plane to that kid. He kept giving me an address. Uncle Bob, let's get – there he is. There is Uncle Bob. Dude, we missed you, bro. I missed you in my streams for sure. Uncle Bob's a moderator now. Um. So, yeah, it took me like six months to get that plane to um, to breaking silence. It's just that he, he gave me an address that didn't work, and then a lot of it was just putting it off and putting it off, man. And I've gotten a lot better with that with Eric. I have uh, Shadow Ops RC helping me out a lot uh, with a uh, with a uh, kind of like a layout of what I have for giveaways, what I've sent out, what I haven't sent out, how much those giveaways cost, you know, what what was the price on the giveaway, and we're keeping a log of everything now. I'm just we we're just going to keep a detailed log of everything. Not to mention, uh, what's with the SU30? Uh, the SU30 is in the RC room. Um, it's ready to go. It's ready to go. I just have no uh, place to fly it right now because everything, it, the snow's the snow's horrible. Uh, Adrian, uh, that's exactly what I did today. And for the last week, I've been talking to the hobby store. Um, I went into the hobby store and they said, hey, Dave, the retracts failed. Okay, we just ordered you a new pair. They're on their way. So for a week, I'm thinking, oh, I'm just waiting for the, the, the shipment to come in. So I've been communicating with them for a week, Adrian. I've been communicating with the hobby store. And I, I, I'm not putting the hobby store down. I'm putting the people in the hobby store down. There's a difference. The hobby store is great. I, I wish the hobby store was run by other people. I, I, I think the hobby store is actually great. He's got a wonderful business there. I'm not putting the hobby store down. That's not, that's not my intentions here. My intentions aren't to put the hobby store down. The hobby store is fantastic. I, I don't have an issue with the hobby store itself. Just the way that things are being, the, the way I'm being dealt with at the hobby store is the issue. I'm a loyal customer, man. You don't, you, 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 you always honor your loyal customers, man. You especially, especially now if it was me that actually went out and broke that retract, 
I wouldn't have gone back to that store and said, Hey man, you know, this broke mysteriously. No, you can obviously see just by looking at the retract that it's, that it's a manufacturer defect. I mean, you look at one retract and it's, it's fine. It's in there. It's crimped. It looks good. But the other one, it's not crimped. You can see that the, the, uh, the, the metal shroud that the, that the screw mechanism goes into in the motor has not been crimped at all. It's actually still perfectly round. That's that screw mechanism supposed to go in there. And then there's a machine that crimps that thing down and holds that. It holds that screw mechanism into the motor. Well, at the manufacturer, this didn't happen. So it was just sitting in there, basically just sitting in there. So when I went to put the retract in, down, it fell out, which caused the retract to just dangle because there's nothing that the screw mechanism has fallen out. So now you got this dangling retract. I just, I just felt like that they were just giving me the fucking runaround, man. And I don't deal well with shit like that. I, I, I have a very hard time with dealing with shit like that. I don't like to be given the runaround. I don't like to wait on shit, especially if it's not my fault. I already waited a week to get these retracts. I've waited a week. The snow and then this, that, and another thing. I understand that. I get that. I did not bitch at them not one time. Man, why is it taking so long? You know, why is it taking so long? It shouldn't take this long. Not one time did I bitch. I didn't bitch until they started coming back at me saying how they they, they, they possibly weren't going to be able to honor them or honor the return. Um, and then I got even more pissed off after I spoke to Horizon myself and found out that this is no big deal. He's going to get reimbursed for them. He might, it might take a week or two for him to get reimbursed for them, but he will get reimbursed for them. They said that they would send him out a new pair to put in his inventory. So even the guy on the phone at Horizon was like, yeah, he shouldn't be giving you this big of a deal. He said most hobby centers wash their hands with it and just make you take care of it. I much rather would have done that than to have heard him his spiel. Because all his spiel did to me, Adrian, was it just made him look bad. It just it made him look horrible. I'm sorry. I'm not going to sugarcoat shit. I'm not going to stick up for you if you're not being worth worthy of being stuck up for. And the the line of shit that he fed me after uh, you know, I'm not a dumb guy. I'm pretty. I'm a pretty intelligent fucking person. I'm not stupid. He contradicted himself in the same sentence. And I just don't play that game, man. I don't do that. I don't do that to people. I don't treat people that way. Oh, sorry. I don't have my glasses on, Aiden. My bad. I don't have my glasses on. I'm sorry, Aiden. Aiden, let me get you a blue wrench, bro. He's like, dude, my name is Aiden. <laughs> my bad, dude. Hey, you show up on the first of the month, and we'll put you in the drawing, dude. You could possibly win a... Uh, win a plane at the beginning of the month. Um, so Aiden, my apologies on your name, but I mean, I don't know, man. I, I was just, I was just a little pissed off when I was treated that way by, by a hobby store that I 100%, I, I 100%, everything inside of me supports them. And then they get treated like that after supporting that company and, and spending my money there. And like I said, I could literally buy everything offline. I don't ever have to go to that store. As a matter of fact, when I went to get those retracts, they were sort of the wrong ones. And I actually had to um, fabricate my, my landing struts. I had to bend them and, and my struts, not the retracts, the struts for the plane. I actually had to bend those to get them to go right because they gave me 81 degree retracts when I should have had 90 degree retracts. But I said, that's fine. I'm not bitching. I'm not complaining. I'll just bend the strut. And they fit in there. Perfect. You guys, those E-flight retracts fit perfect. And it, and it, it was such an, it was such an awesome upgrade to such a beautiful plane and to have them fail like that and then break the motor mount and shit like that. And then get dealt with by the hobby store the way I did today. After the whole week, I'm expecting that I can go in and get those retracts right when they show up. And then to be told, you know, no, you're going to have to wait. No, I'm not. I'm not waiting on anything, man. I'm, I'm not. I'm not waiting on anything. I shouldn't have to wait on anything. 
If I sold you something and it fucking broke the next day, God damn it, you'd be bet your ass I'd be giving you your fucking money back for it. Straight up. I don't play games like that, man. I don't play games like that. Unless unless you bought something from me and you knew the problems and I sold it as is and it was physically written out in a contract that says you're buying this as is and there are problems with it. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you there's something nothing wrong with it if there's something wrong with it. Not that they knew something was wrong with those retracts, but you're a store. You have a rep reputation to uphold. And that's not the way you build a good reputation by turning down your loyal list of customers. Um, Hangar 51, that, uh, that E-Flight, um, that E-Flight Falco Wolf that I put those retracks in, man, those, uh, those aftermarket E-Flight retracks. Uh, one of the retracks, one of the, uh, retracks, uh, that I bought, one of them was great. It was fine. It actually still works. And then the other one, um, it just, there was a process that's supposed to happen at the factory that didn't happen. And that was the, the process in where the screw mechanism gets crimped into the motor so that it doesn't come out. Well, that process wasn't done at the factory. So when I went to retract them with the gear hanging downwards, I tested them up like three or four times and they were fine. Well, the reason that they were fine when, when I had them up, like them facing up and the plane on its back was because there was being there was no pressure being put on the strut. As soon as I flipped that plane over and the retracts came down, now you're putting you're putting weight on that on that pin mechanism. And it just pulled the pin out because it wasn't crimped in there. That's a manufacturer defect. Um and I'm sorry, but when I called today, Bert was trying to make it seem like it was all my fault. Oh, we can't replace those. You broke them. You damaged them because you landed too hard. As a matter of fact, if you watch the plane, it didn't land hard at all. The plane, the plane was barely moving when it landed. So it's just that they they started bullshitting me from the very beginning. And I don't deal with that kind of shit. And I could care less if every one of those people at that flying field hate me after this. I don't care. I'm not going there again anyway. If if um if some of the guys that I made friends with there, if they want to come and see me. That's fine. They can come fly with me at my field. I just, I, I'm just done. I'm, I, you know, there's a few people, like I said, there's a few people at that flying field that I absolutely love. I love Eddie. I think Eddie is a wonderful person. I think he's a stand up guy. He's not going to shoot. He's not going to sugarcoat shit. He's not going to feed you full of bullshit. And those are the type of people that I like. Eric, Eric's another one at the flying field that I absolutely love. He's an awesome dude. He's a stand-up guy. And he's not going to fucking sugarcoat shit. And then there's a couple of other guys there, too. I can't really remember their names right off bat. But um, you know who you are, man. I flew with you all summer long. I just can't remember your name right now. You know who you are. I flew with you more this summer than I flew with anybody, even more than Eddie and Eric. Um, you know who you are. Uh, and I'll go back in the uh, – I'll go back in my um, – in my history of my um, – of my comments, and I'll find out. Um, I'm hoping that your name comes to me by the end of the stream because uh, I think that that's, yeah, I just got a bad memory, man. I just don't remember names very well, but you know who you are. Um, just nice guys, man. They're just super nice guys. I just, you know, I don't know. It just seemed like it was personal to me. It really did. It honestly felt like it was personal to me. If I was someone else, they would have granted that without without a question. You don't make shit personal. You don't make you don't take your business and make something personal against the customer. You just don't do that. That's bad ethics. Horizon in motion customer service is great. Uh, Horizon's customer service has gotten a lot better. I'm not gonna lie. Like I wasn't even expecting to get a hold of anybody today, and I did. I actually got a hold of somebody. So their customer service has definitely gotten a lot better. Uh, yeah, Roy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the hobby store tomorrow. I'm going to pick up my broken retract, my broken retracts from the store. I'm just going to go in there. They're going to hand them to me. I'm not going to say a fucking word to them. I'm just going to go in there, grab my shit, and I'm going to leave. Um, 
And that's that. They'll never see me again. They'll never see me again. They'll never see my fucking money again. I, I, I just, I just, I like, I, I don't deal well with bullshit, you guys. I just don't. And that's, that's what they gave me from the time I called to the time I hung up. It was just one bullshit excuse after another. I just don't deal with that shit. I don't. I don't have to. Neither do you guys. Nobody has to deal with that shit. I'm not going to deal with it, and I don't expect any of you guys to deal with that shit either. I'm sorry. I just, I think the right thing to do was not what happened. The right thing that should have been done was not what happened. And um, that's unfortunate because I do spend a lot of money there. I just dropped $1,000 in that store. I just dropped $1,000 in that store at the beginning of the month. 1000 bucks in that store. And last month, it was probably right about the same. I think I bought two planes from them last month. Uh, not sure. And I've also bought other stuff in there. That Beast Buy plane that I have sitting over back in the corner, back uh, behind the uh, F-18. I bought that plane there from someone um, who was a member of the flying field. And the store was doing him a favor by selling his plane in the store. I bought that bitch. I bought it. That was 300 bucks, 350 bucks, something like that. <clears throat> I bought it. I spend my money in that store, you guys. And it's just a damn, it's just a damn shame. It's, it's a damn shame. I'm not going to give nobody a couple of, you know, give me a couple of days. He said, I shouldn't be giving you any time at all. You should be just honoring this. I'm. It's not the customer first. If you're worrying about the money that's in your pocket, man, it's not, I'm sorry to say, but you just, he just, he just really just made himself look like an asshole. And, I, and I'm sorry. I, I don't deal with assholes. If you're an asshole, remove yourself. I mean, that's just, that's, that's just that. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to treat you guys with any disrespect. Like I said, if I sold you something and it broke the next day and you're like, Dave, you dude, I just bought this from you. You know, you didn't tell me that it could have some issues. This broke. Well, can I fix it? Is it something that can be fixed? Let's get it fixed. If it's something that can't be fixed and it's something that's detrimental to the, to whatever I sold you for, for good permanently, You be cheat. You be cheating on PRM. <laughs> right? No, I'm not cheating on you, Ryan. I promise, I'm not cheating on you, man. That's right. I should be buying my shit through Pilot Ryan Media. Buy your shit through Pilot Ryan Media and never deal with this shit ever again, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it first, right here. Buy your stuff through Pilot Ryan Media, and you will never deal with what I'm dealing with right now. <laughs> I try to be honest, Reckham Roy's. Like even when I sold you that P47, I was like, it's in decent shape, but it's got some blemishes here, blemishes there. I tried to be as honest as I possibly could with you about the plane. Uh, and when you got it, you're like, Dave, there's not a damn thing wrong with this thing. It's it's actually beautiful. I, I, you know, I probably made you feel like it was a piece of shit that I was sending you. But when you got it, you just realized that I was just being over cautious with you know, selling you something, you know, I, want, I wanted to make sure that you knew every little dent and scratch that was in that thing before I, before I sold it to you. I mean, I honestly think that that's, that's probably, um, been a, 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 a blessing and a curse in my life. The honesty thing. It's, um, I can find myself being a little too honest at, at, at some points, uh, where I'm actually fucking myself over. And uh, if that's the way it's going to be and I end up screwing myself out of some money or screwing myself out of something because I'm being honest about it and I'm being too honest, then oh, well, that's just that's the way that's the way it is. That's the way it's going to be. Um, but, yeah, guys, listen, I didn't want I didn't even want this live stream to go this far or this long. I kind of just wanted it to be about this pack. But I honestly just wanted to get your guys's opinion on the whole situation. Some of you guys were mixed. Uh, Aiden, he had his opinion on it. Um, and a lot of you guys uh, were, were very supportive supportive of the right thing to do, which is exactly what I thought. Uh, at least I sleep easy. I don't know about that, Troy. I don't sleep too easy, man. <laughs> I got PTSD, bro. I don't sleep very well at all. <laughs> Why you having trouble sleeping, Tony or Troy? Are you having? We have uh, what do we got? Oh, the RC Air Marshal's in here. He can do a one-on-one -on -one, like sleep therapy with you if you'd like. 
No, I'm just kidding. Uh, let me give you a let me give you a wrench, Troy. I don't know what Bert was thinking coming into this live stream. I, this is this is this is this was not for his eyes to see. This is this was for me and my people to hash out. And he's not one of my people. He's not my people. You guys are my people. He's not. He had no business coming in here. I wish there was a way that you could block people before um, before they actually come in. Uh, but Troy, hey, show up on the first of the month, Troy. Uh, I do a live stream uh, right around the first. I think it's going to be like on the 28th this month. Uh, and I, I'll pre-announce it before I do it. Uh, but we do a live stream giveaway once a month. And uh, we usually give away a really nice plane. Um, uh, so make sure that you're there uh, in that on that live stream. We'll get you a number and put you in the hat. And uh, you can have a chance to win as well. Um, last month we gave away uh, T33, the new Motion RC T33. Uh, to Hangar 51. The month before that, Jeff's Custom got, or actually Skyblazer, sorry, got a Flightline Bearcat. Uh, we also sent out a, a brand new Dynam 262 to Love RC. He's in here right now. Um, so yeah, man, uh, make sure you join the family, man. I, ta I take care of you guys, man. I, I, I do. I take care of you guys. You know, not all of you guys have won, but the guys that have won uh, know exactly how special it is. Um, to win something and actually the person comes through and goes through with it and actually gives you what you want. Uh, you don't find that on too many channels. You know, you got these people with clickbait. They want to click, want you to click on their channel and they'll say free giveaway. When I say free giveaway here, guys, it's, it's a free giveaway. It comes out of my pocket and I have it sent straight to your door. So uh, yeah, guys, uh, like I said, I didn't want to keep you guys too long. Um, if I offended anybody, I don't care. Fuck yourselves. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't give a shit if I offended anybody. Damn it. No, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, if I if I offended anybody with the way I was acting um, and the way I was talking, I do apologize for that. Um, just kind of the heat of the moment. Uh, I tried venting to my wife earlier and she was just like, you know what? I don't really give a shit. <laughs> That's kind of like the, 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 like, that's kind of like the vibe I was getting from her, you know? Um, she, it's it's kind of childish to her, but at the same time, it is 180 fucking dollars, and she does understand the concept of money. So she does understand that they were really fucking expensive, and that the hobby store should be honoring this. Uh, there should be no there should be no nothing. They should they should, they should have honored it, and that's that's my wife's opinion on it as well. Uh, she feels the same exact way that I do about the situation, except that she she always wants me to take the more calm approach towards things. And uh, that's just one thing that we've never really seen eye to eye on. If I felt like I'm being done wrong, if I felt like I've been done wrong, I, there's no eye to eye with me. If you're going to do me wrong, then I'm, I'm not going to do you so good. I mean, that's just that. Um, and I'm not yelling out any names of any stores here. I just said that I was at a hobby store. So I have not put no company on blast. As you guys know that, you guys heard that right here tonight. I never said the name of any fucking company, did I? Some of you guys that have been subscribers to the channel – for a while, you know the hobby company that I'm talking about. You know the hobby store that I'm talking about. But for you new guys, you guys have no idea what hobby store I'm talking about. I'm not trying to put the hobby store on blast. I'm trying to put the employee ethics on blast. So you guys understood that I never gave out a company name tonight as I was giving my spiel. I never said a damn thing about a name of a company. I never said the name of the hobby store for a reason. I'm not here to put the company on blast. I'm here to put the goddamn employees of the company on blast. Lee Davison just sent me something. All right, guys. I'm Dave. This is Dave's RC. What do we got coming up? Uh, tomorrow we have uh, – I have bowling, and I, it really sucks because, Josh, I really want to see your streams, man, but I bowl on Wednesdays, and you have your stream right smack dab in the middle of my bowling. And it, it, it kills me that I don't see it. Um, and then right after Josh, uh, Josh Weaver tomorrow, you guys, we have GB Linden. And then on Thursday, Hangar 51 will stay up with your ass all fucking night until you're the last one in his room. He will stream with you all night long, you guys. So give Hangar, Hangar 51 a chance. And then come see me, total line, 9 p.m. Eastern times on Friday, guys. 
Don't forget Pilot Ryan Media, 9 p.m. on 8, 8, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturdays, and the Merry Boozers, uh, 8 p.m. on Sundays, and then Air Marshal Mondays. Uh, don't forget to check out your boy Dave Air Marshal, the Air Marshal, on Mondays at 8 o'clock. He's always got something fantastic he's talking about. He helped me get my SU-30 all figured out and got it hooked up to the, uh, to the DX radio, the DX-8 that I have. Very, very knowledgeable person. He's moving up in the YouTube community pretty fast. He's almost at his 500th subscriber, which is uh, which is just unheard of uh, to start out. Jeff's Custom RC. Don't forget about Jeff's Custom RC, you guys. Um, and then uh, what else do we got? That's it. Tuesdays, Bledsoe has a stream, but I don't know if he's doing that right now uh, or what's going on. But I think he starts at about 8 or 9 o'clock as well. So check out Bledsoe's Trains uh, for his stream and when he does his um, – and uh, I'll get I'll get more information on that, and I'll get back to you guys. Maybe somebody in this chat will tell you. Uh, but that's it. That's all I got for you guys tonight. I'm Dave. This is Dave's RC, and I am freaking out of here, guys. I'm going to bed, or I'm going to try to go to bed. I'm going to try to sleep. I'm out of here, guys. Peace.